Today we've come down to Reef and Fisheries to take a closer look at using expander pellets on the feeder and it is certainly a method that can get you a few bites in the spring months. So the first thing to think about is when does soft pellet fishing on the feeder become the method to use? And for me personally, it's all governed on the time of the year. So now finally, we're getting slightly better weather. Spring is literally here or just round the corner and these fish are gonna start reacting to the slightly warmer temperatures. So for me personally, I think that means they're starting to look for baits such as pellet, but not completely going all out fishing hard pellet, that's where the real edge of this soft pellet comes in. So for me, time of year, really, really important. And another reason why I choose to fish it on the feeder rather than the pole is because as they haven't been charging around all winter, there's normally still a bit of clarity in most lakes. And sometimes the cast of the shadow of the pole can really spook them off. So I'm only chucking sort of 20, 25 meters just past the pole line and it can be really devastating at this time of year. So taking a look at the tackle itself, it's really nice and simple, but it is important to balance it to the style of fishing that you're doing. Now, because we're only chucking, say, 20, 25 metres today, I've got a Matrix 10-foot feeder rod, which is nice and soft, and also a really nice soft tip. So for the finicky bites this time of year, it really does give you a good visual aid. That comes down to a 3,000 reel and four pound main line, which then comes down to perhaps the more important thing, which is the rig. It's nice and simple again, so we've got a 30 gram feeder which is fixed onto a standard feeder link and that runs up and down free running onto the main line which buffers up against a small little rubber float stop which is then against a twisted boom section. Now the twisted boom basically does exactly what it says and it creates a boom so your hook link doesn't tangle around the feeder. Now you could use perhaps three or four little rubber stops, it would do the same thing. But I just think the twisted boom is a little bit more finesse for this time of year. That then comes down to a 18 inch hook link. Now I feel the 18 inches is quite important because expanders are kind of neutral buoyancy. So you get a slow fall, that last little bit after your feed has hit the bottom. And sometimes you can get a fish pretty much sort of on the drop as your bait's falling down. So the 18 hook, Hook link is finished on a little tiny size 16 eyed hook, which is on a hair rigged speed stop. And that's what I'm attaching my expanders to. So like I said, nothing particularly complicated, but just nicely balanced to the fishing we're trying to do. So taking a look at the baits for the session, as I've already mentioned, when it comes into spring, soft pellet plays a huge part into my fishing. So we'll start off with the hook baits, which is expander pellets. And now for me, it's really important to get these right because they have to be fairly squidgy, but not too soft that they come off on the cast. So to make it really simple, I use the Sonu Pro expanders, which are ultra easy to prepare. You literally cover them in water the night before and when you come to your peg the next morning, they'll be absolutely spine and spot on. No need to pump them, really, really easy. So other expanders will work, but those ones for me, just very simple. 
Moving on to the baits that we're putting into the feeder, again, staying on the pellet feed, I've got some soaked two mil pellets, which at the start of the session, I've just covered those in water, let them draw all that in, and again, it's nice and soft. Soft pellet this time of year, the fish definitely pick them up, readily more than they would a hard pellet. The other thing I've got is some tutti frutti crushed expanders from Hinders, which again, staying on that pellet theme, but with milled expanders into ground bait, it just gives you a different option. So in the feeder, you could either have 100% micros, 100% expanders, or you could mix it up throughout the day. And once you find out what's best, that's when the fishing really starts to get good. looking to give yourself a slight edge and set yourself apart from potentially the people either side of you who are fishing exactly the same method then it's well worth investing some time in colours and flavours. Now the best thing about pellets and especially expander pellets is they take on and soak up flavours really really well. So a couple of my favourites is Sonny Bates F1, it's a real sweet liquid and really does react well in cooler water so as it's not quite summer yet that one is really, really good. The other ones I really like is the Captivate liquids because they actually are not only flavours, but they're colourings as well. So Captivate Betaine Green is really good. I don't know why, but green in pretty much any commercial is very, very good. And the other one is pretty much the same, but in red. My two favourite colours, and they offer some flavouring as well. Now it's up to you how you apply these. So if you want to put it into your hook baits, then you could put the colours and the flavours into the water before you soak them, or you could just drizzle it over the top once they're all prepared. And that's the same with the micros as well. You can colour those, you could flavour them. So it is a bit of a combination juggling exercise. You have to work out, do you want a different colour hook bait? Do you want it to match it? But once you've worked that out and you've found yourself a colour and a flavour that's productive on your lake, it really can make a difference into your fishing. The last couple of tips we'll talk about are really nice and simple, but the ones that if you get right, really do make a huge difference in any style of feeder fishing. So the first one is make sure you plop that feeder in the same spot all the while. Pick yourself a far bank marker, clip up on your reel, and then it really is a case of just ringing that dinner belt in the same spot. The more accurate you can get, the more fish you're drawing in and home them in to exactly where you want them to feed. So get that practice in and hopefully your feed efficient will improve across all areas. And now lastly, a bit more specialised to this style is expanders, like I've said, I've got on the hook, but I'm not actually putting them into the feeder. So occasionally, as we're only fishing 20, 25 metres, I like to pick the catapult up and plop a few expanders over the top of it. And sometimes not just having your hook bait is like the only one in there that just makes them slip up and they don't know which one's your hook bait or not and you're also ringing another dinner bell with plopping pellets in. That constant rain and falling through the water, again, visually more attractive, hopefully creating more interest into your area where you want those fish to feed. Well, there we go. We've had a great day on the soft pellet, fished on the feeder. I'm convinced that a few of those tips has helped me put an extra couple of fish in my net. 
And while we're waiting for a couple of months until it really warms up, the methods that we've talked through today are a great way to catch a few fish.